Valley, I'm ready. I have my charge hat. I'm here and I'm ready to calculate the capacitance for a boost converter. What's that? Oh, we don't use a charge hat approach for the boost converter? Okay. Right, we don't use it for the boost converter. We actually do a different calculation and we're going to talk about how we do that. The boost converter has the inductor at the input here, so the calculation for the capacitance is actually going to be independent of the inductance. So let's look at when the switch is on, where the current is flowing. So when the switch is on, the current flows through here in this loop, and because we need to provide power to the load, we're also going to have current flowing in this direction. So capacitor charge is going to be supplied to the load during the switch on duty time. And when it's off, it's going to go to the other phase. But from this, we know that the capacitor has to uphold the voltage within a certain limit. And we're going to assume that you know you're given a delta, delta V out that is your target ripple, alpha voltage ripple. So assuming you have a voltage ripple that's your target, you want to pick a capacitor to ensure that your voltage stays within that ripple, this value or below. So to do that, we need to understand how the current is flowing. This is the current for the capacitor during the two uh, stages. So during the first stage, and this current is going into the capacitor, so during the first stage, current is coming out of the capacitor, so we actually have a negative value. And we know that the output current has to be maintained at whatever the average value is. So actually that current is going to be the average output current here at this level. And then during the other phase, it's going to put all that charge that it that came out of the capacitor has to go back into the capacitor to charge it up to the same level. So this charge and this charge is actually going to balance. But for this calculation of the how to size the capacitor, we actually can look just at this value. We can start with the capacitor equation. So IC equals C dV dt. And we're going to be looking at just the on time of the on switch phase. So from 0 to dt here. And that means we can make these deltas instead of d's. So we can see delta V, so the change in voltage, over delta T, the change in the time. And we want to calculate the capacitance value. So let's move this equation around. Our capacitance value is going to be equal to the current, IC, times delta T divided by delta V. If we apply then the conditions for the switch on phase, we will see that IC is going to become this IO. And here we'll just IO. It's actually going to be a negative, but the delta V is also going to be a negative, so those will cancel out. And then your DT, this will become DT, and then your delta V is going to be your delta V out, which is your value that was given to you or the ripple value that you want. So here you just need to know your duty ratio, your period, and the output current in order to figure out the capacitance that you need to achieve that ripple. If you want to be more specific to this resistor, we can simply put that value in. We can also write it as this value instead of IO. We can write it as V out, average V out, over R, and then DT over delta V out. So this is the equation that you can use to determine the capacitor value that you want for a given uh, change in the output, so the voltage ripple, and it depends on your uh, output current, which is your output voltage divided by resistor, and dt. So there's no charge hat here, it's just a straight calculation, and this will help you, give you the value for the capacitor that you want. Some students get confused because in reality, this is actually an RC circuit, so as the current is flowing through, 
it's going to be decreasing in voltage. So if you wanted to actually write it out, or draw it out more accurately, it might be decreasing like this, say. So there is some change in the current value over time. But because we're dealing with averages, the average value that's going to come out of that is still going to be the average output current. So we approximate that as the average value, and we do not do all the integration of the slight change in the output current. So it is there in the waveform. There will be some difference in reality. But when we're doing the calculation, we will simply use the average value and calculate it like this.